Hey everyone, it's Jason. Uh, welcome to a video for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Ig Adventure Systems Miniatures game uh, for uh, the big sets for Changes, Constant, and City Fall, and there's obviously a bunch of expansions. Um, so you can check out my previous videos I've done unboxing, showed off all the miniatures, all the cards, all that stuff. So in this video, um, which will be multi-part, um, what I want to do is go through all the different scenarios um, the adventure comics for this one, uh, and show off, like, uh, how to play, like, what the rules and stuff are, and actually show off the maps. Um, I'll kind of be talking over them, maybe, like, mentioning some of the stuff in them, or about the lore, blah -de blah all that stuff. Um, but the idea of it is for maybe someone that picked up, um, Maybe you picked up both sets and you lost your rule book. Hey, here you can check out my video. I'm gonna hold hold them all up for long enough so you can like pause the video, see what your rules are, do that stuff. Um, or maybe you picked up um, just changes constant, but you didn't get city fall, but you like to play the scenarios from it. Um, you okay? You don't have the exact map tiles, but you can make do with what you have. You know, okay, this guy plays here, this guy plays here. I just got to use a different map or some different tokens, um, so on and so forth. Or ideally, so part one is we're going to go through the Changes, Constant, and City Fall, which are the two base game sets. Uh, assuming most people, if they're going to be looking at this stuff, will have the two sets. Then video two is we're going to go through um, the Seeker History, Deviations, and the Stretch Goals. So these were the expansions. And other stuff. So again, this this could definitely be a thing of you picked up the two base games, but you didn't get the Kickstarter stuff, you didn't get the expansions. Um, you can kind of see, I know that some of these do have maps that are going to, again, um, exclusive to these sets or these boxes, but you could always make do with what you have as long as you know what the rules and where the placement of the guys are, or you could add your own characters in there. Um, you know, mix and match. Then the third video that we'll actually do is for Shadows of the Past, which is the original version of the game. Um, the turtle characters and the cards, um, like the stacks and all that stuff, I think per, pretty much stay the exact same. Um, now there are some different characters. Um, in the newer versions, there's more characters and stuff. The map tiles are a little bit differently. Um, but, like, the rules and all the base of that stuff all stay the same. They just have some different types of missions because they have less characters. They have, um, different characters in some of the different missions. So I thought it'd be fun to go through and we'll do one bigger video for all of that stuff, which is, uh, book one, two, three, four, and then the Kickstarter stuff. So that'll be video three. That way, if maybe you bought Changes Constant and City Fall... But you like to play some of the old ones. You can definitely adapt. A lot, some of the tiles are the exact same or fairly close. Some are brand new or, or fairly different. But again, you can kind of mix and match. Alright. Alright, so that's just the kind of spiel of what this video is. Uh, like I said, I'll hold stuff up long enough so you can kind of read it and pause it. But what I want to do first is just relook at some of the train features. Um, just so that that way you... Um, you know what's going on in here. So, alright, so we have yellow are slow terrain. I'm not going to read through all these, but I'll hold them up again so you can kind of keep track of them. The red are rough terrain, so stuff that you uh, have to stop on. Green is covered terrain, things you can hide behind. Uh, we have all the rules for elevated terrain, which are blue. Uh, but yeah, this is just so that way if, like, it shows a picture in the thing or shows a token, you know, what they're doing. Um, then, of course, we have unstable, which is orange, a blocking terrain, which is black. We have fire escapes, uh, gray, which is obscuring terrain. And then we have harmful terrain, which is pink. And then doors. I think, yep, and then we have a couple other quick things. We have cameras, which are, um... Have their special maneuvers. They rotate 180 degrees every turn. Um, and then there's uh, some different object types. Spawning locations. Large throwing. Small throwing objects. Uh, train types. Or line types. Grindable. Which have like the dotted orange line. Blocking. Obscuring. Slow and climbable. Which are all very similar to their uh, full ones. 
And then we'll look at terrain movement. Just as a quick reminder to toss some of these up. Kick, cover, leap, grind, climb, crouch, throw, and example. I think that's all of them. Alright, then also just to help out, we'll show off the terrain color guide. Uh, which came with the games, but just maybe this might be a little bit easier way to keep track of all this if I can get this to focus. There we go. So yeah, our slow, rough, covered, elevated, blocking, unstable, obscuring, um, hazardous. I don't know why they didn't have a word for that. Uh, and there are lines, all those, and the door types. And then on the other side, we'll just we'll do a quick look at the general terms. So now what is very interesting is so this adventure system also utilizes the Batman animated series. Um, but one big difference between the two games, Turtles and Batman, is that Turtles is more about combat direct stuff. It's like getting across the field, taking out a bunch of guys, their spawn points. So um, villains... Uh, enemies like ninjas and nin the Foot Clan stuff will keep spawning and coming at you. Where Batman is more about rescuing bystanders, getting through various puzzles. So it has, um, it has some new elements like gadget cards and stuff. But you have a lot more status tokens. Um, like turtles typically just have like crouching or guard. Like you're choosing to do it, um, or there's like knockdown tokens. Uh, but Batman, they have like laughing gas. Like entangling coatings, they're like freeze coatings, shock coatings. Uh, they have a lot more different stuff like that. They have bombs you have to defuse, um, but they don't have the camera system. So, um, definitely something you can always combine together. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we got our introduction here, and then we have our setup, which Star tells you where you put your hero. If it has a particular picture of a character, that's the character you use, goals, color decks, and total number of figures. Uh, then what I'm going to do for each one is when I actually get into it, and just a heads up, we're going to kind of hold on the title page. We're going to hold on the, um, the rules page for a sec. You can kind of see what you have to do. And then we will hold, uh, we'll go from components to villains to each side of the map. So you can see where everything is. Now, the thing that's different, all right. Alright, so that's how I'm going to go through each one. To start off, we're going to start with, we have Changes Constant and City Fall. Now, Changes Constant actually came in Adventure Comics Part 1 and Part 2. Um, so, I thought about doing was just doing each book in order. But what I'm going to do is try and do them in mission order. So, it's going to be like book one here. Then we're going to jump to City Fall for a few chapters. Jump back to Part 2 and then we'll kind of be bouncing back and forth. So we'll be playing them in story order. Um, I'll make sure I show this cover before I switch the cover of the book and before I switch to the new books. You know which book we're supposed to be in. But that way if you want to play them in actual order. Um, now there's nothing, again, with the way these work, you can play these in any order you like. You can play them as single things. But if you want to play them as a full campaign, this is kind of how they work. So our table of contents for Changes Constant is we have... Um, the tutorial introduction. So each one kind of has a little introduction page to explain what's going on. And then they're broke up into three um, different maps, three or four different maps um, or scenarios. So like the tutorial has parts one, two, and three. Changes constant has parts one, two, and three. And enemies, old enemies, new has one, two, three, and four. So this would be the first uh, the tutorial and then the first two, like, stories. Um, there's all the awesome people that worked on this game. Um, so that's how we'll start. So we have the tutorial campaign. So we'll start this off. So this is going to have Battle 1, 2, and 3. This is just to get you started into the game. Uh, something stinks. So let's go through our rules here. Uh, so it recommends uh, who to do, what villains, if they have special rules there. Hero strengths, so if they get extra um, abilities, objectives, how the heroes and villain wins, and the victory conditions. And then they do, they do have uh, in bold proceeding what to play next. 
Um, and then under that, sometimes they have if you win or lose, um, if something happens. So like if you win, you just go to the next thing. If you lose, the next battle increases the number of foot soldiers by four. Um, and that's actually really nice that they have that kind of bolded so you can tell. Plus the heroes and the villains being different colors, it just helps everything stand out very well. Alright, so our components, we're going to need, each in the show, we're going to need subway cars and a bench. And I'm not going to read all of these for everyone, just the first one here. Um, the initiative, just showing you have your four heroes, whoever you choose. Um, Thug Brawler, Thug Gunner, Split Ninja, and Alopex. Uh, difficulty boost, choose one. Um, villain always brings things around five, or may call an evil ally. And then I'll actually show you what characters, uh, what they are. So, like, Alopex is the leader, the other three are minions, what decks to use, um, red, blue, greens, um, and number of figures. Now, this is with the assumption that you are playing the competitive modes. This is one player is playing the heroes, one player is playing the villains. If you are playing um, the AI or cooperative mode, then obviously you're not going to use these decks. You'll just throw the AI cards out, and then they'll work from there. Um, all right, then you know, if we look at map number one at the top, it'll tell you what uh, tile number it is. So it's seven A. Um, I still love this the null group with the uh, road kill Rodneys. So it's gonna show you where everything goes, so you can see where your maps are. They have the outline for our tokens, um, where each character starts. And if we look at 6A, we get the other half. Nice and clear, easy to read. Uh, you know, very simple. Now, there, there's definitely some differences between this and the Batman. I just did the, a video for this for the Batman one, so I'm going to probably keep referencing it. Um, the Batman one was really nice because it put, like, down here, it might have, like, A, B, and then little symbols up there so you know where A, a and B were. Um... But this breaks down some stuff other ways. It's kind of weird. They're, they're made, same company, um, same game system, but they did stuff so differently in each one. Uh, join the foot. Um, so as I mentioned, we'll have cameras in there, focus check, uh, and then what everyone does to win and lose. Let's flip to the next one. I don't want to spend a ton of time on each one because there's a bunch to go through. And this, of course, adds a lot more different spots to it or components. Difficulty boost, which is a really fun thing to be able to do. And then how many guys? Now this is just, again, your starting number. So there are spawn points on these maps now. Um, so there's 6A. I love that this also goes from 6A was on the right side before, now it's on the left side. So it's like we are traveling through the subway. Um, we went from the train car skate tracks to the stairs. Now we're from the stairs over into the sewers. So it adds for a really... Good idea for, um, like a story mode. Like you're playing through this, playing through the map. Um, which makes that really fun. We have Reject Roundup. And proceed to book one changes constant. So after you play the tutorial, to get you familiar with, um, grindable terrain, blocking terrain, spawn points. Um, all that different type of stuff. Then this works more of some elevation. So now we're going to go to 7B. So now we've left the sewers and we went up to the top. And you see there's some doors that guys spawn out of, which is kind of cool. And then there's 6B. The streets. Alright, so that's our tutorial. Alright. Then we're going to head into Changes Constant. Now, if you're not familiar, this follows the um, IDW uh, comic book series, which this is the artwork for it, some of it. Um, so this kind of follows, loosely follows the story. I mean, like, they have everything based off it. So now this does have some tie-ins as well. So these A's are for arcade battles. Um, which we'll kind of look at those when we get there. So they have like a comic book page, just kind of explaining what's going on. I'm not going to focus on that. We have the Skies Rumble Battle 1-1. Um, and then they will have like description, a lot more rules in there. Now it does have stuff for competitive and, let me zoom up on this a little bit more. Competitive and cooperative mode. Um, so competitive again is one player playing as the villain. Cooperative is when you use the AI. Um, 
And now here it's interesting because you'll have stuff where um, Arnold receives the following attributes as a token. Um, now it's very possible you could always choose to, he's normally just Arnold, but you could use um, his, oh why can't I think of his name, his purple dragon version. If you want to use that miniature instead of a token. Um, yep, then we have our victory conditions. Arnold Jones, evil allies, added to the battle. Alright, uh, flip to our map. So usually the difficulty boost, lots of times you may call an evil ally, um, that's, I think that's sort of like a, a, a thing. But no, it's just like, here we have just a bunch of thugs. You know, nothing to argue. Now, this is actually kind of a neat one, too, because it has multiple maps. So we have 1A. I don't know why my camera just does not want to focus today. There we go. And now we right into 3B. So kind of half and half on there. Buildings and go like the dump area, and then we have six B's. We have a special uh, area where now this thing I was saying like you're gonna play as Raphael, um, fighting Arnold Jones, and then you have the rest of the thing where your other hero characters are doing stuff over there. So it's kind of a neat little different mission. Um, now it does again recommend using Raphael. You can play this with whoever you want if you choose to. Alright, and then we have Raph and Casey. Raph, Raph. Uh, we have Lost and Found. Uh, so, yeah, like, rules. Raphael must be chosen for this battle. He starts on the left side of the map, allowing other three heroes start on the right side. Shares action dice with the other heroes as normal. So, that yeah, if you're playing through strictly the campaign, then you should follow the rules. But, like, after you play these, you can always replay these with whoever you want. Um... You know, I, again, I almost recommend, though, if, like, you're going to do something, you are going to, uh, um, swap out your characters. Um, like, instead of playing as, uh, Raphael and the four turtles, you're gonna play, or the three turtles, you're gonna play as, you know, um, randomly select characters, you're gonna play as, like, uh, you know, April and Casey, Splinter, and Slash, you know, then you should take the leader card and randomly swap them out as well. Um, or if you're playing co uh, competitive mode, let the villain player pick someone else they want to play. It's like, if you're just going to essentially be using this for the map purpose, um, like, hey, these are the spawn points, these are where guys start, you know, right? Then let the other player pick whoever they want to play as, too. You know, um, additionally, if you're going to play as, like, uh, AI version, competitive, uh, or cooperative, sorry, um, randomly shuffle all the AIs together and then do that. You know, like, like, if you're just going to play just the map, like, let everyone pick their own characters. Alright, so we have 1-3, a family reunited. So this is going to mention here, Tobias, says, Victory, proceed to micro-series or book two, any old enemies, uh, new enemies. Um, so yeah, you can go do the little micro-series, or you can do the um, old game. We'll look at that at the end and see what that exactly means. Uh, this is where the game kind of bounces around, gives you some different options, uh, which I think is actually a really fun idea. So instead of just having to play Mission 1, 2, 3, 4, um, it's going to give you a little bit of leeway on what you do. So now we have 4B. I'm going to fight Old Hob and some thugs, and now you're kind of surrounded. And then 5B. Alright, so now if we flip over, now we have Old Enemies, New Enemies, which is Battle 2. Now, it mentioned the micro-series, which are, if we open up Adventure Comic Part Number 2, we will see we have um, Mission 3, Shadows of the Past. We have the micro-series, um, Raph... Raphael, Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonard, and we have the arcade battles, which you could also play. Um, so if you want to jump into the micro-series, they're going to let you play as individual battles for each one. 
um, which run a little campaign. We'll look at that second. We'll finish off Battles 2, and then we'll come back and look at the micro series. Um, all right. So we're going to jump in. We have Splinter being attacked by some Mosers. Uh, Rat Trap. Um, and then we have some rules for competitive mode. We have Tiny Figures. Each hero's life is reduced by four for the next battle. Ooh, boy. All right. Small breakable walls, spawn points, wooden platforms. And then just a bunch of most, but total figures, 30. <laughs> um... Yeah, so we're going to start with little mouses everywhere. They remember tiny characters now just getting up on one space. We have 1B. This is also a fun little scenario map because there's a swarm of enemies. A lot smaller enemies, so it's a little bit easier to defeat, but there's going to be a lot more of them. Plus, their characters all start separated. Um, lots of these missions or scenarios, they always start together. So it's really fun to have one where everyone starts a little bit different. Um... There's part of that comic. I can really hold up the comics. Um, Battle Cuckoo, a better mouse trap. Any vig villain figure tailed will in a space of harmful trains removed from the battle instead of being returned to the figure pool. So that's kind of neat. You can tail a guy um, in harmful train. They don't get to keep respawning. So, I mean, potentially you could eliminate them. Um, eliminate enough guys so that don't come back. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen very easily, but it's at least potential. So you have some Mousers and some Old Hobs. So yeah, now we're just adding Old Hob in here to fight with all them Mousers. And then we're still on the same map. We're on 1B. Um, but there's a broken wall in there. Now your turtles start together. Spawn points everywhere. And then now we have a whirlpool. So if you can knock guys into that whirlpool, they don't respawn. Um, so that's actually kind of neat. So you can keep knocking enemies in there, pushing them in there somehow. Um, you could eventually eliminate, you have to eliminate 30 of them. But hey, if you eliminate 10, that's 10 less that won't spawn later. Um, definitely cool. Alright, uh, we have some cameras. And we have Baxter's Gambit. 2-3. Uh, this uses the camera mechanic, which is really cool. I am definitely surprised the Batman game didn't reutilize the camera mechanic. Um, it definitely seems something that would have been primed for them. Probably at the end of book two, I might kind of like do a quick run through on some of the Batman ones in this video. Just to kind of show them off, but we'll wait till, till video two. The Mega Mouser and Baxter Stockman. Alright, uh, 4A. There's some hidden tokens you have to try and reveal while fighting everybody off. They have trigger points is what they were. Each character has to stand on one spot. Um, plus this utilizes another fun mechanic in this mission. So you have 5A. Where as long as some doors are closed, um, the most of characters on 4A won't, won't attack or won't do anything. So you can spend your time... Cleaning out this room before you open them up. So you don't have to worry about the other enemies attacking you ahead of time. This is a really neat mechanic. Um, protocol Exterminate. Now we're going to fight, take the fight right to back. Right to back. So now it says, in the victory, it says, um, TMNT Adventures continues in City Fall Book 3 Shadows of the Past, a special crossover adventure. Both changing, changes constant in City Fall are required to play these battles. So, if you just play, like, you just bought Changes Constant, you still have a bunch of stuff in Book 2, which we can, can look at yet. Um, but if you want to keep on the story, you have to buy City Fall. It kind of, um, it's kind of an interesting way to do an expansion, because it would have been the opposite way. You could have picked up City Fall to begin with, um, and you just wouldn't have had this part of the story. Um, so we have 4A. It's a lot of Mousers to fight. All right, now we have some artwork here. Not too worried about that. The giant mouser. Um, all right. So 
that brought us to Changes Constant, book two. So if we look at that, again, it's going to jump into um, Shadow of the Past, part three, um, section one, and then we have our Micro Adventures and our Arcade Battles. If we go to City Fall, if we actually jump into City Fall, you have Training Session 2, you have Story 4, which is Sins of the Father, City, or Part, um, we're missing Part 5, uh, because we have City, City Fall Part 1, um, City Fall Part 2, which is number 7, then right here we have Shadows of the Past Part 2. So this is the crossover one. So you'd have to have, which I would put it later. Because you have to have Changes Constant to play that. But that's the other half. And then you have Arcade Battles. Um, so what we're going to do first before we jump into 3, which is the crossover. We're going to look at these um, micro series. Then we'll go with 3, 4. And we'll come back and look at all the Arcade Battles at the end. Because they're kind of like one-off missions. Um, Alright, so these micro battles. Let me get to them. Alright, so the idea of the micro series is based, because these are based off the comic books, is each of the comic books had, um, like, a single, like, uh, storyline for each character. Each of, each of the turtles, uh, went off and kind of did their own thing for an issue or so, um, or a little series, I think it was a couple issues of each. Um, but it's each, each one's kind of based on what they did during those issues. Um, so they're played a little bit differently, so you're gonna play the four of them, um, so we start off with Raphael. So the thing is, each one, um, except for this one, the other three are all played with just a single player. So if you're playing with other characters, or other people, you're playing a cooperative game, um, either you have to take turns, or you could always turn around and be like, I'll play the Raph mission, I'll play the Mikey mission. You guys could play two separate ones at a time if you wanted to, space permitted on the board. Um, or work together. Um, so here, first one you have is Raphael, uh, which this one says, may only be played at two heroes in cooperative mode. Uh, Raphael and Casey Jones are recommended. So this one does have multiple. And that says, if you win, go to Micro Series Michelangelo. So we have our components here. Our villains, Alopex, and some thugger, thuggers. So, um... So A1, yes, yeah, so it's just a little battle here. So again, if you're playing two player, you can each jump in and play one of these characters. Um, playing uh, versus cooperative. Uh, I keep wanting to say competitive and cooperative. I hate to have them words. If you're playing the versus mode, one personality just plays a Pex in the villains as well. Um, so there's that one. So now if we jump into Michelangelo has a thieving storyline. Uh, I stumbled across a jewel heist. Um, so you can only be played in one hero in cooperative mode. So I guess just to play this against um, against the AI instead of having someone take control. Uh, so there's our things, and it goes to Donatello. So there's some different things there. Police car. There's our things. Now you notice I have decks or NA because again you're not supposed to play with them. Um, well then we have a double map. We have six or sorry six. We have eight A. And so I have different cameras in there. We have a uh, jewel we have to try and collect, and then the outside the map uh, for six B. And we have Diner Teller's mission, which he's working with, um, uh, the, er, Harold, I wanted to say Professor, Professor, but it's, uh, Harold, L Elijah, or Kirby Fang 01, um, so yeah, this is also cooperative mode, so you could have, again, if you had enough room, you could have one player play one of these missions, you have two players, each player could take two turtles and play their own mission, um, and then you can go ahead and get the Leonardo. And since they're one or two tiles only, they're not taking up a ton of space on the table. So you could probably play through both of them. I should have enough minions to play them. So you're going to fight Baxter. 
just has a 4A, has a special uh, objective coatings there. And this one she's just trying, you know, somewhere a little bit different. Like we, Mike or uh, Mike Landers is trying to get that jewel and escape um, with with the item. Uh, Donatello's is all about just trying to escape the actual area, finding a certain item, and then leaving. Uh, Raphael's is about defeating a bunch of people, and Leonardo's is all about survival. Um, and you can always swap out, swap out and play these with any characters. Now it says, if you beat this, then proceed to book two. So technically, you should have done story one, the micro series, story two. Um, but it does let you skip these, go right to story two, if you don't want to play the little solo ones. In fact, you understand, again, you sit down with, um, you know, so, like, I have a gaming buddy, you sit down to play some games with them, and all of a sudden, now you're stuck playing solo missions. Probably wouldn't be that fun. Um, yep, so we and I are here all about just surviving a certain number of rounds with ninjas that keep spawning. So it's definitely interesting. 7B. Alright, then we have the arcade battles, which we're going to skip for now. Uh, but they're just a couple of standalone one shots, which just kind of tell some of the different stories of the game. Um, but they also lead into other different things. So then we wanted to do was head into part three, Shadows of the Past. So you notice at the beginning of the video, I did mention Shadows of the Past. It was going to be our third video. That's the original storyline. Because um, the original version of the game picked up with Shadows of the Past. Against, it kind of skipped over uh, the changes constant and um, City Falls storylines a little bit. And it went right into Shadows of the Past. Uh, so this goes back. So this campaign does require City Fall to play. So this is 3-1. There's some of our characters. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Um, battle must be played with six heroes. A splinter may not be played since Purple Dragon's Turf. All figures receive plus one attack hit. So this is the other reason why it requires a second a second game because you have six characters. Um, the base game only comes with four, I want to say. I think, yeah, you just come with the four turtles. Yep. Um, yeah, Changes Constant comes with the four turtles. And then City Fall comes with um, Splinter, April, Angel, and Hob. Does it come with... Or did Casey Jones come in? Is Casey Jones in there? Oh, first one does come with five. It also comes with Casey Jones. Um, yeah. Anyhow. So yeah, we have that. So we have five characters in that one as well. Uh, but yeah, you need extra characters. Alright, so here's that. So it says, Proceed the Shadows of the Past in Native America in this... In Native America, the City Falls Adventure comic. So this is still in the Changes Constant book. You can play through the first part... But to finish it off, you would have to go to the other book. Oops, we missed the map. And this is where the game gets a little bit more hectic. A lot of different components. A bunch of different characters. Ten purple dragons. Because yeah, one set has the thugs, one set has the purple dragons. There's a lot of minions on the board here. It's a game war, and we're going to interrupt it. 1A and 16A plus tiles from each set. Alright, then if we head over to the City Fall book, we are going to. So now, again, we look at this. We have a tutorial too, which we're going to skip for right now. We're going to skip 4, 6, uh, 3, and everything. We're going we're gonna to go right to page 62 and jump into section 3. And we're going to finish off this story. So we have Shadows of the Past again. Battle 3-2. In need of a miracle. Just so we'll continue that storyline. And it says proceed to book 4, Sins of the Father. The villains win, the villains win the adventure. So if you lose this, you're done. 
uh, so it's kind of interesting. Um, so here's all the components and initiative on this side. Our villains. Listen, some multiple different foot ninja sculpts. Elite Foot, Shredder, Cry. And there's our four map tiles. We have 16, or 6B, 15A, A2, and 16B. Um, so I'm going to zoom up on these a little bit more so you can kind of see how you set them up. So here's how the top, because that's 6B and 2A. Have your streets there. And then 15A and 16B are going to set up the foot dojo. Alright. Then before we head into Battle 4, which would be uh, section, story number 4, Sins of the Fire, we're going to check the other training section. Um, now we've kind of completed off that story. So training, next, section 2 is going to be Dockside Patrol. So this is if you picked up City Fall and you needed to play this particular story. Our components, initiative, boost, increase the number of purple dragons and foot soldier figures by two. So 15B, have some uh, question mark tokens on there, so that's like the docs. And then 14A. We have Tutorial 2, Foiled Plans. Each hero receives minus one skill for the next battle. That would suck, right? Alright, our components and initiatives and boosts. Our figures. Our map, we have some orange tile, token tiles in there, some spawn points, 11B, and then we go back to this side, which is the right side of the other one, so now we're moving away from the docks the other direction, kind of like the original tutorial gig, we're just going the other direction, we have 15B. And then we have Music Theory 101, our third tutorial. Bebop and Rocksteady. The Bebop and Rocksteady initiative card in addition to their additional initiative cards so they occasionally get an attack at extra. So this is after this jun jump to book four. So if you're just playing, you just picked up uh, City Fall, you would play the tutorial, then you'd start with section four. And you, again, kind of ignore three, just like you did in the first one until you got the second book. You can have Karai join the battle and it makes that nice and hard, right? This is actually kind of a neat one, too, because it's just Turtles versus Bebop and Rocksteady. So it's like, I like that the tutorials for one versus the other, um, they still like teach you some of the different stuff in the game and mechanics and stuff by adding them, but they don't, they're not just repeated from one to the other. Um, Alright, so then we're going to have. Mission number four, Sings of the Father, which will have three parts as well. Alright, so we have Attila the Hung. So 4 1, we'll kind of zoom up on this. Um, so some of these can only be played in cooperative mode, which is interesting. Um, the, not everything's available for the. Uh, uh, both modes. So they kind of want you to play this game in cooperative mode most of the time with some op optional times not. Um, which is a very interesting way to play because it's like I, I wish that there were more setups so you could play them. Um, oh, his name is Hun. That's right. Arnold's name is Hun. Leader of the uh, Purple Guide. Yes, yeah, so, like I personally would want to always play this in cooperative mode. Just because of the fact I like playing with people versus against. Um, but I wish that everything in the main mode, the campaign, was both. You had the option of which way to play it. 
you could sit down like, oh, I have three people. We'll put, I'll take two character heroes. You take two heroes, and the third third person could play as all the villains. Um, or if you had four players, they could break it up and like, you know, one person could play like um, one of the big characters. Or if you had two, you could split them up. Like, I think that would be a better way to play the game. But when you keep flipping, some of these flip back and forth. It's kind of uh, frustrating. Um, Anchor the Gojo. Uh, plus, lots of the hero or villain decks are actually really cool. Um, some of the different cards you get to play. Um, yeah, this is a very interesting thing. So we had a couple of guys here. We have Heroes and Splinter. So we're just fighting Splinter. And he has a special deck for playing against him. So this is just training against him. And then we have Test Subject 2077. Uh, slash may not be used for this battle. Green objectives, red objectives. This is kind of a fun mission as well, like... So you're trying to defeat Slash, but you have to discover the, the lights first, otherwise you have an obscuring terrain. Um, which means you can't, and you have less movement. So you have to kind of stumble around in a dark room until you find a light switch, and you still have to try and beat Slash. Uh, so and he has the advantage because he doesn't have to worry about any of that. So it's kind of interesting. Alright, then we would head to Mission 5, which is City Fall Part 1. So now, if we go back to our table of contents, we just want to point out that they did mess this up, and they called it 6, and then 7. And it's actually, if we go through the book, it is actually 5, uh, which they do have a tie-in battle, which is a 6. And then if we go to um, City Fall Part 2, it is 6. So they just messed up in the beginning, just a heads up on that. Alright, so let's look at City Fall Part 1. All right, City Fall Part One, Battle Number Five. All right, so we got uh, this sort of case. Jones has been kidnapped. He might be chosen for this battle. So now we're jumping back into where we have both competitive and cooperative modes, um, and then go to Part One, The Fallen Sun. Um, yeah, so. One thing I kind of mentioned like, I was talking about in the Batman, which I think would be an interesting mode to play, would be like a full-on campaign. Like, play through all these in order, um, right? But have a special, like, you have to come up with some extra rules and stuff. I don't know exactly how to do it off the top of my head. But the idea was, as you play through, um, like, you start off with, like, only certain characters, um... And then as you play through, like, you can earn extra allies. So, like, maybe you start off with just the four turtles. Or maybe you start with only two of the turtles if you want to play. Depending on, I think lots of these are expecting you to have four characters. So, let's say you just start with the four turtles. But then as you play through missions, you get to unlock, you know, Splinter, April, Casey, um, all of them. Then eventually you could also unlock, like, Old Hob and Slash. Um, and Alopex and some of the other characters that, that were introduced like through expansions and Kickstarter and, um, and stretch goals and stuff like that. And the idea would be like, you have to like, as you play through your characters, unlock more stuff. But you also have your deck of cards. Um, so here's 5 to the Fallen Sun. Um, yeah, you have your deck of cards you have to play. So, well, like maybe you start off with like, you get to pick one to start with, and that's your one you start with the game with. And as you finish more modes or finish more battles, and you win, you get to um, pick another card. So as you keep winning more and more uh, match matches, you get to add either new figures to play as, um, new ally cards that you can have. Like, maybe you start off with only, like, the April ally card, and then you can maybe pick up the other ones. Um throughout the game. Um, and then you can also pick up more cards for your characters. Your characters are basically learning, training more. They get more abilities to use and interact with. Um, so, you know, like, if you're playing, like, as Old Hob, like, you start off, like, 
I just think a cop of his heads, I just played him probably most recent, is I only has like a like a machine gun. Um and you could like start with that. Then you could pick up the sniper rifle and a later one, and then maybe you could pick up his grenade. Um you know, just different things like that would be kind of interesting. Um so here's a Mac for actually fighting Leonardo. Um But yeah, that could be kind of a neat way to play. And then like as you you gain, as you play through and you do better, your characters are going to get more powerful. Um, our Worst Nightmare, Part 3. Uh, foot and hit rankings may spend katanas as if they're shrewdings. Ugh. Um, and then, kind of the opposite way it would be, um, if you lose matches, because lots of these, like, if you lose, you still continue on. It doesn't end the game. You still continue to the next scenario, so you have to keep replaying it. But then you you take bad things, like you have to like discard some of your abilities. Um, and I thought maybe another neat idea of that would be like if your character gets KO'd during a match, like you take like a take a wound. So then like your character in the next match would start with uh, like every time a character got KO'd, they would take like a wound. They'd start when they respawn, or, um, if they respawn, um, or get picked back up, they have one less health, um, like, one less maximum health overall, um, as well as, if you lose, everyone takes one point of damage, so that way, if, like, I'm playing the four turtles, I lose my first match, you know, each character got killed, so they start with one less health to begin with, then, since we lost, they also start with one less health, so the next match could start with two less health. Um, and I think that would be kind of an interesting idea. And then the, um, so here we have City Fall Part 2, Battle 6. Um, like the overall idea of that would be like to, to, pen, to penalize you for losing matches or getting KO'd for not being careful enough. Um, so crumbling foundation. I'll keep interrupting myself. Um, but yeah, that, it would be an interesting idea. Because then, like, you have two options. Either A, you're going to be taking weaker characters into mag matches. So if you lost one battle, okay, maybe that's not too bad. You can still get by. If you lost the second one, by the time you go to play the third one, your characters are going to be coming in with, like, two, three health. You're going to lose a lot quicker. Um... So, like, where the other, if you're winning, you're going to gain more characters and gain bonuses. But if you start losing, um, it's going to maybe force you to have to, like, sit characters out to recover. Because then you could have a mechanic where, like, um, if you win a match instead of getting, like, a new card. Like, I, I thought I'd be using some sort of experience points thing to, like, add, like, like, um, like, it's cheaper to add, like, a card or an ally than it is to add, like, a full new character. Um, but that'd be the same thing. You're using experience points to heal. Um, so if you got KO, but you still won, you could always use that to heal. It would still show your character taking wear and tear even while playing matches. Um, but yeah, I thought that'd be kind of an interesting idea. Uh, here's 9B and 14B. We're gonna fight some foot ninja and some purple dragons. Um, but, yeah, yeah so that's the idea. Is that, like, if you get KO'd too many times, eventually your characters are going to be knocked out and, um, because they won't have any health left when they start the match. Um, or during the match, they get KO'd and they won't have any health left. So it shows them being hurt too much to keep fighting. Um, so there we, therefore you have to, like, in between missions, like, oh, okay, we lost, uh, we won the first match, but uh, Mike Langer got KO'd. Then we lost the second one, so he got KO'd again, plus rock. Now he's down three health. So you go into the third match, you might have to be like, all right, we need to swap him out for April because he needs to rest. Otherwise, he's starting with half health. Um, the idea. So I thought that'd be kind of a neat mechanic. Like, also force you to, like, swap your characters around once in a while. Um, the foot. Knight belongs to the foot. Um, and then the other idea would be, like, if your character gets knocked out completely, like, their health goes all the way to zero, like, you got, you got KO'd or lost too many matches, any character that gets that, they get captured. So, therefore, you can't even rest and then reuse them another turn. 
Um, there's some cry bebopping rock steady. Um, yeah, but I thought that'd be like an interesting mechanic for like a campaign mode. Like you win, you're gonna get stronger, but as you as you get killed or you 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 get you lose a match, like you get to keep playing, but it's gonna weaken your characters. You're gonna have to set some out, and then like to heal, like I said, like. Like, I, like, way to heal would either be, like, spend, spending uh, one of your XP points, basically not getting an upgrade, and you can heal a character um, by one point. So if you had three XP, you could heal three characters. Um, so it might help if someone got KO'd too many times. Or, uh, with Breaking the Veil of Lies. Um, or, additionally, if you sit a character out, they'll heal one point, if they're out for, uh, he'll like two points if they're out for a match. So if like, again, Mike Lang, for example, had taken uh, f f like five points so far, you got KO'd a couple of times, you lost a few matches o over time. Every time he sits out a match, he heals two points. Or if they sit out two in a row, um, they completely, they completely heal. So, like, then way you wouldn't have to sell entire games. You would have to sell, like, four games or five, three or four matches. When you could sell out two or sell out one match and use XP to heal guys if you didn't think you needed to buy anything. Um, I thought it would be kind of an interesting way to do it. You really have to sit down and set it up as a campaign, especially for the Ninja Turtles. Because here they have some where, like, oh, Splinter's... Uh, you have to fight Splinter in this match, or you have to, like, Casey Jones has been captured, or Leonardo turned evil. Like, there are certain times you wouldn't be able to use certain characters, um, based on the story mode. So I'd definitely change up how that works. Um, but I think like, if you start with four characters, you could eventually purchase enough other characters. Or start with five characters, so you have one rotating one. Um, so six, four, we have Hot Pursuit. So yeah, um, and this one's I more says heroes win the adventures or heroes or villains win the adventures. This one you have to either win or lose. You wouldn't get to continue, but this would be like a stopping point. You get this, you stop, and then like now you can start another uh, campaign. But you could just continue it anyways. It's like, oh, we're going to keep playing, right? Maybe just keep the villain thing like you can't lose this one. Or if you lose it, maybe like there's a bigger penalty like if you lose all your current heroes are tailed regardless of how many hit points they had right uh or if you win you like they have a rest everyone gets rested back up to full like you got like various things like that after certain certain checkpoints here um yeah that'd be a little bit different like i did mention the batman one they do have gear cards um like a, a utility belt cards. That was the idea there. You could spend points also to buy those. But you could to buy allies. I think this game has a lot more allies. Um, than the Batman one did. A little ally cards. 16A. Bebop and Rocksteady. And we have some purple dragons. in 18B. But yeah. Definitely be an interesting idea of something to do. Alright. Then we looked at Shadows of the Past. So we are up to, um, we're up to the arcade battles. So this one has, so City Fall has 7, 8, and 9. So we're going to flip back to a changes constant, and we're going to look at the original one. So that will have the introduction to arcade battles, as well as 1 through 6. Now again, some of these did mention, um, they did mention they're going to jump in and play. And you also see on here, it says they're competitive or cooperative modes. Um, but it does mention, like, you could jump in after, like, a certain one and play this one. And then play that. And again, this is one way you could follow that campaign that direction. Is, if you're following fully, you could be like that. You could jump over to this mission. Do that one. Like, maybe skip the micro battles. Um, now that's the other difference here is this versus, like, the Batman one. Is this has a lot more structured storyline. Um... The Batman one was just episodes, so it's like episode one, like you fought uh, Man Bat, episode two you fought Mr. Freeze, episode three you fought I think Joker and Harley Quinn, I might be wrong on the orders there. Like, so that one I actually recommend for like playing a full campaign because it had less of the 
if you win this, do this, lose this, that maybe during Acts 1, 2, and Acts 3, and get it, but not too much from, like, one, like, one episode or act to the next. So that one, I recommend you could kind of mix and match them. Like, you could just draw, like, oh, I'm going to play episode 3, then I'm going to play episode 8, and then play episode 24. Um, you might not be able to do that as much here. You still could, just, but the thing is, the bonuses might not work the same from one to the next. Alright, so we have some arcade battles, which are just kind of little one-offs. We have, uh, Classes Paying 101, uh, Raph and Cass, Raph and Cassie, Raph and Casey. Um, recommended those two. Uh, spawning location may inactive until both heroes are on the goal at the same time. When the location is active, immediately spawn new villain figures or an old hob. After a spawn point, new villain figure is normal at the end of each round. Um, she says, proceed to changes constant, a family reunited, uh, for the dramatic conclusion to this encounter. Alright, so a bunch of objectives here. There's old Hob and Thugs. This actually plays again another three tiles, which is always a fun different one. So they're trying to run through the city, come out of the subway, or... Uh, with 2A, 3B, they go into, like, the dump. Or, like, uh, this parking lot type area. And then 4B, they're trying to get to the other side. And then we have... Now that mentioned... Changes constant a family reunited. So, where is a family reunited? One sec. So, family reunited was uh, episode one, number three. So, ideally, it's wants you to play one, two, and then three. So, if we jump into uh, oh, set two here. Yeah, so it doesn't actually mention that. That's why I was wondering if it was going to mention when to jump into that. So it says, then go to Family family United. So it doesn't tell you right on here when to hop into that mode. It does say at the beginning of the thing. It says you have some tie-ins, but it doesn't say when to jump into them. So it's, it's, a, it's a little... You almost got to kind of like stop and like pay attention to that. All right. Anywho, so we're going to jump into our next one here. We have a lot to learn. Sparring mode and team sparring mode. So this is a little bit different. Um, there's no villain, only heroes. Do not share action dice. Instead, each hero is his own three dice. Alright. Last hero standing. So this would be one you might not be able to necessarily throw. You, you could throw in the campaign if you wanted to. And be like, hey, we're just going to have a sparring match. Um, let one person maybe level up a little bit more. Um, so you have sparring mode, special rules here. Then any map or combination of maps, you recommend you place heroes in one or three, three spaces away. So you can always play on one, or you can play on multiple maps. They just use the big blank tile. Um, 7B. That's definitely an interesting little idea. Just to, let's test out our characters. You know, again, you can use, like, a training session in between, like, scenarios, like, between, like, uh, story, through like, story... Uh, like, uh, changes constant story in City Fall stories, but so between two and three. Hey, we get a sparring mode. Um, our characters all, hey, you win, everyone gets a card, right? Something interesting there. Alright, so we have A3, a, the trap is set. Um, that'd be the other thing you have to check with doing these is like, at some point, like, um, Old Hob and Alo Pets are villains, and then later on, you might be able, they turn into heroes. So if you're trying to unlock them versus like a story mode, like you'd have to like, you have then you have to sit down and write this out and figure out when you could do what, like who's available. Um, I'd be like, oh, this is the last time we fight Alopex, right? Or whatever. Okay, so now she's an ally. Um, you know, or you have the option of getting her. Another thing I think I'm not sure if every card has an ally card. Um, is be like maybe you have to purchase the ally card first. Then, after you purchase the ally card and use it in a battle, 
like you have to use an X spell, then that character can join you on your team as a new miniature um, and get the cards. Like that'd be kind of an interesting way to play that. Um, A4 high tech heist, the tiny and giant. So we have Baxter. So it's like, like even like some of these objectives. So it's like uh, the villain wins if the heroes receive two or more KO tokens amongst all heroes. So that means like you're playing four players if you're using these special uh, scenario campaign rules. Um, the most KO amounts you get is you have one character could get two or two characters could each get one. But you could KO like a mass attack and KO like three or four characters all at once. So it's very possible to do something like that. So we have uh, some breakable walls. Some Baxters. And now, how would you want to play this if you're playing something where someone's playing as a villain? Like, what do they get to do? Um, that, like, the villain win, do they get anything extra? I think there you could always use that difficulty boost. Like, right? If they win, they always use that difficulty boost, no matter what. Um, you can always do something where maybe then they could add extra ally cards and have them sitting around to get, you know, there are ways you could do stuff with that as well. Um, I didn't really think about that too much, um, but it's something you can do. We have Plan B. It's like this was a villain wins if any hero is KO'd. So, like, you get some of these, like, really hard, hard things where you wouldn't get them damaging too much, but then if you lose, everyone takes a point of damage. And that's the kind of idea, it's like, oh, we all took a beating, now they're all weaker. Like, if you win, you could assume, oh, maybe they didn't take too much damage to win. But if you lost, it means everyone took a beat down, you're all going to take some damage points. Uh, 6B. That's a lot of mouses. And then 2A on the subway. All right, and then we have one more for changes to constant. We have Marshmallow and Pepperoni. There's a turf war um, over types of pizzas. Um, each hero will keep track of a villain figure that KO receiving one point for each KO, minion of five points for each KO leader. If a hero's life reduces to zero, it gains five points and immediately regains, loses five points, immediately regains life equal to their awakening attribute. I'm going to be crowned before reshuffling this to spawn new minions in the order of initiative. I think of round four, spawn the villain. So it's kind of neat. So you're just tracking up, like, who's defeating the most characters. So yeah, it's kind of like the sparring mode, but instead of fighting each other, you're fighting villains. So it's kind of a neat idea as well. A difficulty boost. Heroes may, attack, may target and attack each other. So that can definitely be a very interesting thing to add in there. So that could, that could be like, hey, like, yeah, if you played this one, like, m like in the campaign mode, right? It'd be like, if you lost the time before, you could be like, all right, everyone's, you know, sparring against all these games, but your kind of tensions are high. So you might be a little bit more competitive and you might knock your other turtles out of the way to try and get more points where, as if you're just playing as a team, like you just won, you might be like, no, we're all going to work together. Um, alright, so that was Changes Constant. That's all the ones we have for that. Then we have City Fall. Um, if we jump back to our appendice, we do have three more at the bottom there. So seven, eight, and nine. So let's jump into those. If we can find them. Alright, Arcade Battles again. Desperate Times. Um, so you can use Splinter for this one. This is again another one where we're supposed to use one hero. A bunch of different rules there. We'll hold that one up. It's neat because even though these are, um... Uh, like, one-off battles. They're also representing lots of stuff as things that happen in the comic books. Like, this is, uh, one of the issues where Splinter's, uh, trying to steal mut mutagen for, uh, Old Hob. Um, which is definitely kind of cool. It also shows off, which I haven't seen too much, is the, uh, Steam. Um, 
Oh, yeah, the cameras. You also have the Steam, which um, the Batman game doesn't use either. So I'm very surprised. That would have been kind of a neat idea. I think there could be some really cool combinations between those two games. I'll maybe ramble on about that in the next video. Um, so we have 12B. There's a Mute King Coke in there. All right. Then we have Scavenger Hunt. Uh, for two players with Old Hob and Slash. Again, you can always swap out to anybody else. But you add some different ones. Right? So that last one, you had to kind of sneak through the security system, dodging cameras. This is going to add a little bit different modes. So instead of just being a beat-em-up, they add some different objectives to doing some of these. To make them very interesting. So these are about fires are spreading. So you have 13A. And 13B. Attacking a different lab. And then the last one is Home Sweet Home. So we're trying to get some pizza. Here's when if this safely drop three pieces of pizza onto the goal zone. Um, and then the uh, baggers are trying to take care of me. Villains, uh, like victory. The curls return a pack home with a lot of hungry faces. A uh, party is huge and hit, and you need much celebration for everyone there. Kawabunga, the villains. Heroes aren't the only ones who need pizza party once while well. Villains kick back and enjoy a slice. Pizza is even better when it's stolen from someone else. That's just funny. Like, I can imagine, like, the, um... 80s cartoon like Shredder and Bebop and Rocksteady like they stole the Turtles pizza and they feel successful. Um, yeah, that'd just be funny. All right, so we have another three map. We have 12A, which is our outdoor tile. 16A, which is our streets. And then 10B, which is our TCRI building. Trying to get to the pizza place across the town and then get back across the town while holding it. Alright, so that's what we had for that. So that is City Fall. Changes constant. That is part one. Uh, again, part two will go over like the Kickstarter and expansion pack stuff. Alright, see you guys then. Bye.